Good day, everyone. My name is Maria Konjelska, and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. Since the times of epidemic recalls in us many metaphysical questions, we will talk today about the greatest Polish philosophers of 20th century. With me in the studio is Marek Konjelski, former student of Professor Bogusław Wolniewicz and a Polish philosopher. Thank you for having the courage to be with us. Hello, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to your program. Fever, sore throat, problem with breathing, Fortunately, nothing like this, but it's worthwhile remembering that last plague in Europe resulted in a very outstanding uh, literary output, which is the Cameron by Boccaccio. So we should rather think in these categories that we can bring something fruitful to this world, thanks to epidemic. But still, it uh, is a cause to think in metaphysical uh, in the times of plague. Marek, since we're talking about the greatest philosophers of the 20th century in Poland, and one of them is Henrik Elsenberg, who died in 1967. So he managed to influence and to, he, he, and to work in the 20th century and to write his most important works during the 20th century. And as you understand, he survived two wars. The first World War One and the Second World War, so I would say that he wouldn't be so much afraid of small epidemic of COVID, would he? I think he wouldn't. What he would do during the, during the such times of isolation? If we are talking about Elsenberg, uh, he was greatly interested in the philosophy of culture, and he dedicated his works into theory of values, and there was a very strong distinction between perfect values and utilitarian values. So it was something he strongly underlined. It was also not a very popular opinion at the time that there are some values that are absolute ones. So they are not values because of something or for somebody. That Some facts have values no matter, no matter what, let's say. So they are absolute. It was not very, uh, very popular because this utilitarian way of thinking dominated even then. And this is also something that influenced greatly Volnievich. And in my opinion, he combined the uh, Wittgenstein's ontology with the theory of values taken from Elsenberg. Especially he explained that the values can be conceived as facts. So he put some ontological foundation to the theory of the values. But also he inherited uh, this anthropological pessimism after Elsenberg, uh, who was a very deep thinker in terms of anthropology. And his, one of his thoughts that uh, um, Volnievich remembers is when Elsenberg, after World War II, expressed his opinion saying that uh, the Third Reich was not an aberration in human history, it was an avant-garde, which means that the worst is to come, that it was just the beginning. Uh, so Volnievich had this uh, not very optimistic uh, view, uh, especially on human nature. So this is one of the most uh, important features of his philosophy, his anthropology, that he inherited also from, uh, from Schopenhauer, which is again a development of, of very uh, ancient anthropology that is on one hand uh, with Plato, and on the other hand we inherit this from Old and New Testament. So we moved right now from Elsenberg to Bogusław Wolniewicz, who, as I understand, was his student and uh, was influenced greatly by, by Elsenberg. So what are the, it is influenced by his pessimism, yes, in, in anthropology, and by also as foundation of his thinking logic. That's what you're trying to say. Yes, this is very good observation, but it, it's worthwhile noticing because when people think that the logic is a foundation for metaphysics, they think that we have to formalize, we have to write logical equations to philosophize. It's not so. If you read Kant, if you read Elsenberg, you see that there is no formal logic inside, 
but you have to pay respect to logic. You have to uh, give reasons uh, in your philosophizing, uh, which is not very popular because this is very difficult simply. And especially in the 20th century, when we have to deal with mathematical logic, this is difficult, but this is the only way. And in this way, the Elsenberg, let's say, responded to uh, the demand that was formulated by uh, Józef Bochenski, uh, another great Polish philosopher uh, who, who, was, uh, who was a priest and who wanted the church to continue a kind of analytical metaphysics. Uh, so some of uh, Volnievich's papers are dedicated to theology. They are very deep, although very uh, difficult uh, at the same time. But th th these are fundamental questions. So uh, one of his essays is an essay about the epiphany of the evil. Because in the 20th century, one of the essays of Volnievich is the yes. epiphany of the, of the evil. And yes, and here I would like to ask the question because he he tries to find a way how the the devil works and how he how he worked during the uh, or showed himself. So revelation of devil a little bit in the 20th century is very hard to say. I'm, I'm aware of right now what we said, but that's in the books of Varnevich, the revelation of devil in Auschwitz, in death camps, in Soviet gulags, during the World War II and during the World War I. Is it correct? It is correct and it is in line with the opinion of, uh, of George Weigel, who used to say that we cannot understand the history of the 20th century if we don't apply metaphysics and metaphysical terms to it, because uh, in other ways they are not comprehensible. Uh, in a similar way, Lem responded to this in one of his late essays. It is also dedicated to phenomena of the Holocaust, and this is purely metaphysical, um, very painful, very deep, and uh, absolutely unique. Uh, only uh, Karl Jaspers wrote uh, anything similar about the German guilt, uh, their responsibility for the Holocaust, but. Uh, Lamb produced an uh, explanation to this phenomenon that is beyond any other, in my opinion. So right now we moved to Stanislav Lamb a little bit. But yes. let's go back, because we're going to talk about Lamb, but let's not pull all the cards on the table in the same time. Let's okay. go back to Volnevich again. And uh, he wrote four volumes of Philosophy and Values, and in one of them, he explains, um, he talks about devil. He talks about his epiphany of devil in the 20th century. But another one of his essays is about how God thinks. How well, God thinks. In it is, it is uh, the answer to the question how we can discuss metaphysics, religion in, in the 21st century, how we can tell about God. And th this is in opposition to a dominant opinion that we can say nothing about God. We know nothing about him. We shouldn't even discuss. It's a mystery. I think it's an insult for reason, because what we share with God is reason. Of course, finite versus infinite. So consequently, this is our obligation to try understanding how God thinks. And again, Volnievich does it in a logical way. He formulates some assumptions and explains how God's mind can think. Coming from a famous quotation from Isaiah, that my thoughts are not your thoughts, meaning that God is using different logic than our logic. But still, there is a kind of logic, mathematical logic behind this. And Volnievich tries to develop the rudiments of this logic because this is extremely complicated. But he succeeded somehow. And this is the only paper I know that is dedicated to this problem. Uh, very deep. Uh, he was opposed by, by some other logicians. but. He managed to uh, 
give answers to, to all the, let's say, accusations. So I think it's very worthwhile reading and, and it's absolutely unique. I hope that sooner or later also the church will see uh, how deep thinker he is and that this is the way that a church should continue with their theology. If you ever ask yourself how God thinks, you can seek for the answer in one of the Boguslav Volnevich essays in philosophy and values. Those are extremely important and interesting topics. And right now, when we all have a little bit more of time, maybe it's worth to indulge in this intellectual, absolutely amazing meal. And thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture.